Hello, welcome to the Monday, May 20th, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Just a quick update on the RDP vulnerability that Microsoft patched last week. At this point, uh, there are some proof of concept exploits that have been developed, not necessarily public yet, uh, but this certainly proves that it isn't that terribly hard for someone to come up with an exploit and you should certainly expect something public probably this week. Google released some statistics about how long it takes vendors to actually patch zero-day vulnerabilities after they're being exploited in the wild. We of course had a number of these issues over the last few years and there's always a lot of pressure of course on the vendor once they learn about a vulnerability that's actually already being exploited to then release a patch. Overall, Google finds about one of these vulnerabilities every 17 days, but the, the write-up also states that this is really just the average. What usually happens is when they are coming across for example, some malware that takes advantage of a zero day, they quite often find several of them because you have an entire sort of tool chain of exploits that's then being essentially used. I think vendors actually don't do too bad when it comes to the patching of these vulnerabilities. It takes them on average 15 days, so again, about two weeks to come up with a patch, which overall I wouldn't really consider bad. Google also released a detailed spreadsheet with the raw data used for the analysis. So you can go through this and sort of draw your own conclusion based on vendors and the like. Now, one thing that Google specifically states they do not know, and that's sort of one of those big uh, unknowns here, how long it actually takes for the exploit to be discovered after it was first used in the wild. I would think uh, that there are a number of different parameters that this depends on, like how frequently it's being used and against what targets it's being used, like how sophisticated are these targets when it comes to detecting new exploits. And I have to admit that when I hear that uh, certain vulnerabilities are only exploitable if an attacker has a man in the middle position, I usually discount them as probably not the most severe vulnerabilities that I have to address right now. Typically, yes, it's not that terribly hard to get a man in the middle position, but it tends to be more sort of a targeted attack than necessarily a mass attack. Well, uh, this is a little bit uh, different with the next attack that I'm talking about, and this is an attack against the ASUS web storage software. This is different from web storage in the browser. Instead, uh, this is sort of a cloud storage service uh, that ASUS offers to its customers. And yes, it does suffer from this man in the middle attack. But the way it was apparently exploited on a larger scale is by also compromising vulnerable routers. In particular, the update part of uh, the ASUS web storage software is subject to a man in the middle vulnerability. So in this case, the attacker is essentially doing an evil crate on this ASUS web storage software by compromising a router and then injecting this malicious update. ESET Security, who saw this particular problem, discovered that this vulnerability is then being used to install the Bleed backdoor. Bleed is sort of a relatively standard, uh, simple backdoor. It's uh, really almost more a downloader, where after the backdoor is installed, it's then used to download additional malicious software. ASUS has been notified of the problem, but at this point there doesn't appear to be an update yet. And of course, once you apply the update, well, you have to do so via the existing vulnerable update process. And a number of different researchers from the Technical University of Darmstadt as well as Northeastern University have looked closer into Apple's AirDrop protocol. AirDrop, or also known as Apple Wireless Direct Link, is the software that allows you to easily transmit files to other users that are connected to the same Wi-Fi network as you are. 
This protocol has been proprietary, but these researchers reverse engineered good parts of it and in the process found some problems in how, for example, the initial link up happens, which in part relies again on Bluetooth low energy and how the files being transmitted. The result is that an attacker could very well modify files in transit, could also spoof different users that are participating in this network. In addition, the user interface, of course, does make it sometimes easy to fool a uh, victim into accepting malicious files. Apple fixed these vulnerabilities in an update that was released about a week ago, so yet another reason to update your systems. Well, that's it for today. If you like the podcast, as usual, tell your friends about it, tweet about it, or use whatever social media platform you prefer to spread a word that this podcast is available. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.